Good morning, fellas. I'm Joe with The Color of Marriage, and I'm here live answering your questions related to marriage and being a husband. All right, so welcome to the video. I'm good to, glad to have you two to you all today. And today, we're going to be continuing the topic, why is being a husband difficult? Okay, so why is being a husband so difficult? This is part two. Part two, part one was yesterday, but part two is today. And we're going to be finishing that up, that up today, Lord willing. So let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. So, Father, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness, and for allowing us to have this time in today's live Q&A. Father, I ask you, Lord, that you be a part of today's live Q&A, that you uh, allow your Holy Spirit to preside over today's live Q&A. Uh, lead us, guide us, direct us in the way that we should go, Father. Help my words be your words and not just my own, Lord. Remove anything that will prevent us from having a successful uh, live Q&A today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, good, good, good morning again. Um, so good to have you all here on this live Q and A. So we're gonna finish um, again the topic: Why is being a husband so difficult? And you know, if you want to catch up to this point, please watch the video that we did on yesterday, which is part one. All right. So we're going to talk about, you know, what the Bible says about it. That's the first thing that we're going to talk about, which is mainly what we talked about yesterday. We talked about, you know, the fact that a extraordinary husband needs to be focused. And the fact is that Satan is there to keep you from being focused and there to do whatever he can to devour your marriage and you have to be aware and sober-minded and let don't let anything cloud your judgment don't let anything keep you from being aware of what's going on and keep you from being able to hear the holy spirit that's speaking to you to keep you from going through that push and pull, push and pull that we talked about. And so let's get back to the Genesis chapter that we talked about and, and, and finished, not finished, that we talked about and began yesterday. So I hope you read the portion that I asked you to read. So therefore, you be aware of what I'm going to be talking about. Rather you did or not, we're going to keep on moving on. All right, so let's go. All right, so we're going to be, again, reading the English Standard Version. And we talked about how the serpent came and what, what he did was he deceived Eve. Okay, he started talking to Eve, telling her things that she wanted to hear because she wanted to hear she was enticed. Okay? Verse 6 says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she gave, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Okay, so let's look again. So when the woman saw that the tree was good, I mean, she'd been looking at this tree for, I'm sure for quite a while. I mean, this is not the first time she saw this tree, but Satan made the tree look appeasing to her for all of a sudden now, because of what he said, and if you want to know what he said, just read the verses above that. But, you know, the thing that he said just 
all of a sudden make it make made it appeasing to us to to her and that's what happens to us today we satan does the same things to our wives and to us as well make things look appealing and we start saying and doing things in our relationship that we shouldn't do and say rather they be good things or bad things well rather there's no good things that we that we shouldn't do so it's all so so when i say good and bad i mean those things that we believe are good in those things that we know are bad the things that are good are good according to god's standard and not our standard and that's what this is all about it's about living according to god's standard and not our standard see because our feelings and emotions because of what happened here we're going to see um as we go further uh, on our feelings and emotions became polluted after this our whole nature became polluted and we start seeing things differently we start seeing things from our from our own point of view and not god's point of view and this is what was happening this is what was starting to happen to eve now she could have snapped out of it she could have said no she had the ability to to do that and then the person who was with her could have helped her in that vein as well. Adam could have helped his wife. Why he didn't help her? I'm not totally sure as to why he didn't help her. But he didn't. He didn't help her at all. He, he didn't help her in a good way. He helped her to continue in the pathway that she was going in. All right. So let's keep reading, okay? So when the woman saw the tree was good for fruit, that it was a delight to her eyes. I mean, mesmerized here, folks. She was mesmerized. She started looking at the fruit in a way. She started looking at the tree in a way that she had never saw it before. And that's what the enemy does. Helps you to see things the way that he wants you to see them so that you can disobey God in, in sin. Okay, and the tree was to be desired to make one wise. And that was her goal. She wanted to be wise. I mean, she was already wise. Rather she knew it or, why, rather she knew it or not, she was already wise because God gave her everything that she needed. She was looking for more she thought there was more that maybe god was holding back on her it, it could be i don't know i wasn't there but it seems that way let me read this scripture in a, a couple other versions it says when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom she took some of it and ate it she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it okay the woman this that was the new international version and the reason why i'm reading these versions fellas is so that you can see and hear this in a different way and you could do this as well and there's a tool that i use uh, online and it's bible hub bible hub um, dot com. That's what I. That's what I use. Um, and no, this is not a paid commercial for BibleHub.com. Not at all. I'm just showing you the two that I use, so that you yourself can also have the same um, insight that I have. Also, to use Bible Gateway at times as well. But here's the New Living Translation. The woman was convinced. See that she was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some of it to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. Listen, it's very important that you understand that part, okay, that he ate it too. Okay, and so 
it's important, like I said, and we're going to read a, a, a few other passages of scriptures that tells you why this is important. But continuing on with the different versions, I'm going to read the Amplified Version, and I'm going to read the also the Contemporary English Version and God's Word Translation. Okay, so Amplified, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for f food and that it was delightful to look at, and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful. She took some of its fruit and ate it, and she also gave some to her husband with her, and he ate. All right, Christian Standard Bible. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at, and that it, and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. So she, so she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Okay? Contemporary English version. The woman stared at the fruit. It looked beautiful and tasty. She wanted the wisdom that it would give her. And she ate some of the fruit. Her husband was there with her. So she gave some to him and he ate it too. Okay, and the last one, the woman saw that the tree had fruit that was good to eat, nice to look at and desirable for making someone wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. And the emphasis here is on she wanted to be something that she wasn't. At least something that she thought she wasn't. She wanted to be wise because Satan said to her that, so here, here's what Satan said to her. Let's go back and, and say it. What the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open. And it will be like, and you will be like God. Listen, there's a lot of people talking about they are little gods. And if you are in any type of denomination, so forth and so on, that's telling you that you're a little God, this is where it came from. This is Satan's, this is Satan's doctrine. You're going to be like God. You, you, when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. She pondered that thing for a moment. And like, wow, okay, I know how God is. God knows everything. And I'm sure they spent time with God. And it doesn't say this because this this wasn't, I don't think this was right after they was created or whatever. I believe there's time in between that. But however it, however it was, I know they spent time with God. God coming in and talking to them. And so they wanted to be like God. She wanted to be like God, that is. She wanted to be like God. She wanted to know the difference between good and evil. And this is the thing that Satan does to trick us to do things that we shouldn't do, make it to be appealing to our mind and help make and causes us to imagine what it would look like to get the thing that God says you're not supposed to have. It's like you tell the child, don't cross the road. Well, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? What's in the road that I can't have? So they go to the road and they go to the edge and they look and look. And you tell them, don't go on the street. Don't do it. And they're enticed. Their minds become awakened to what's in the road that 
I'm missing out. And that's what Eve was saying. What's in that fruit that I'm missing? What's in the fruit that I'm missing? That's what Eve was, that, that's what I believe Eve was saying. You know, because that's what it's saying. She, she, she said as we read the verse, it was a, a delight to her eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. And that's what, that's what her focus was. She took it, she ate it, and she gave it to her husband who was there. And then verse 7. Verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. All this time, they, they, they were naked. They didn't know that. But now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, feelings, their feelings and emotions were corrupted. It's like our feelings and emotions apart from God is corrupted. God never intended it for us to make the decision on what was good and evil. He wanted us to make the decision to be obedient and do the things that he knew what was good for us so that we would not go through the turmoil that we're going through right now. But God knew that we needed to go through this turmoil. He didn't want us to go through it, but we needed to go through it. They could have easily ate from the tree of life and that would have been it. It, it would have been a wrap and, and they would have been moved to wherever they needed to be. And God, I don't know, I'm, hy I'm hypothesizing this, but the fact of the matter is, listen, we are going through this so that we can realize when we get to heaven, the stupid decisions that w was made and what we had to go through, and we don't need to go through that anymore. We understand now what's going on. Listen, this, this thing right here is the reason why it's difficult for you to be a husband right now because of what just happened okay so let's let's move on and, I, and I'm going to tell you about Adam in, in in a minute more about Adam in a minute okay but we're going to move on okay so verse 8 and they heard the sound of God walking in the garden in the in the cool of the day and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God of of the Lord among the trees of the garden. They hid themselves. So they're making irrational decisions now. They're not making rational decisions. They, they're they running away from God because they know that they did something that they were not supposed to do. And they, to me, they're, they're not wanting to face the consequences of what they did. So they hid themselves thinking that God was not going to see them. God knows everything. God knows what you're doing. Don't try to hide things from him. He knows everything that you're doing in your life, in your marriage, to your wife, to your husband, that is to women who are listening to this. God knows everything. There's nothing that you can hide from his presence. God knows everything. But we don't realize that God is there to help us not to hurt us. Yes, there's going to be consequences to our sins. Yes, there's going to be consequences. But however, God already told us not to do it. He told Adam and Eve what the consequences was. And so they figured God was about to kill us. I mean, that's the thing I can think of because they, because God told them, the day that you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. So therefore, in their minds, God's about to kill us. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. God is about to kill us right now and and that's not exactly what God had in mind because if, if he had that in mind they would have dropped dead the very moment that they ate the fruit and the fact of the matter is God says now you're going to be separated from me 
And the moment that they ate the fruit, guess what? They were separated from God. And yes, they were going to die because if they had not eaten, eaten the fruit, they would have lived forever. But now they have separated themselves from God, which is death, because now they're not living according to the source that gave them the life. They're living to their own power, not according to God's power anymore. Okay? And there's more to be said, said about that. But the fact of the matter is, they did die. Inwardly, they started dying. Okay? Spiritually, they're, not, they're, they're now dead. They, 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 they don't have the same relationship that they had with God prior to eating the fruit. They were ashamed. They, they're feeling feelings that they never felt before. They're, they're saying that they're, they're looking at what God, how God prepared them. And they say, wow, this is, this is not good anymore. And, and things are starting to change and go downhill for this couple because of a, a, a bad decision that was made. And they didn't have to make that decision. And so in your marriage, you need to be wise enough to not hear Satan speaking in your ear. And I, if I can sit and talk to wives right now, I would say the same thing. Don't let Satan speak into your ears, your mind, through whatever source that he uses to tell you something about your husband that's not true. Look, you can imagine all day and think all day about what you think is going on with your husband according to a situation, but until you start talking to him about what's going on, you'll never know for sure until after the thing that you're going to do to cause problems in your relationship has already happened. And now everybody's talking and the truth comes out. And now you feel like I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have did that. I apologize or whatever. And sometimes you don't even do that. You just let it carry over. But if I can say that to wives, listen, and husbands say the same thing to you. Don't let the enemy speak to you. The enemy speaks to you just as much as he speaks to your wife. And many times you listen to him as well. Okay? So, listen. Start being focused as we talked about earlier and as we talked about in detail in the, in the last video. All right. So, let's keep, let's keep re reading. All right. And, and they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool in the garden in the cool of the day and the man and his wife hid him hid themselves from the presence of the lord god among the trees in the garden but the lord god called to man and said to him where are you god's calling to a lot of us bring wanting us to reconcile with him through his son jesus and he says where are you and he said I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He didn't want God to see him. He was ashamed. He was afraid. There's a lot, thing, a lot of things going on. And God says, who told you that you were naked? And God knew the answers to all these questions already. Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, check out what he said. Instead of saying, yes, God, yes, Lord, yes, Father, I ate of the, 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 the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden that you told me not to eat. I did it. Can you please forgive me? not sure exactly what they would have done, but that would have been a better answer than the one that he gave. He did not confess. Listen to what he said. He said, then he said, um, the man said, rather, the man said, verse 12, the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, 
She gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate it. And I ate. The woman, the woman that you gave to me, gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate it. He didn't say, you know, God, I shouldn't have ate that fruit. I should have told her that this is not what we're supposed to do. What was on Adam's mind when he was being given the fruit? I mean, he was in his right mind. He, he knew what God had said. What was in his mind? What was on his mind? What made him decide to eat the fruit to begin with? What do you think? Think about that. Ask God. Maybe God will give you some revelation on that. But I tell you, you know, from the situation that I told you about yesterday that I went through, you know, when God told me not to, you know, say anything about the conversation that me and my wife was having, you know, I was lured away because I wanted to appease my wife and I thought I was going to be able to, you know, maneuver around the circumstances. But it turned out exactly how God said. And maybe that's what Adam was thinking. Maybe, you know what, to appease my wife. And, and, and I don't know exactly what it is. I'm just saying, because at that time, they didn't have this sinful mind that we have. So I'm not exactly sure why Adam just didn't do it. But that's just what happened. Okay, we can think and hypo hypothesize all day about what happened. But... The fact of the matter is we're going to see a scripture that says Adam knew exactly what he was doing. He was not deceived. And we'll look at that scripture in just a moment before we end today's video. Okay. And so actually after he, you know, you know, put his wife out there and blamed her for what had happened, because eventually, I mean, you know, it was her who ate the fruit. It was her who was, who was being deceived, but he was her he was there to make sure that, you know, to, to protect her. And he was not there to protect her in no way, shape, form, or fashion. So you see here, husbands, we need to protect our wives from the danger. And whatever it is that your wife is doing, if you see that she's doing something, your job is to go to God and say, God, get my wife out of this. Because Adam could have went to God and said, God, what's going on here? Look at this serpent. And look what he's saying to my wife. And look what he's doing to my wife. God, I need your help. Can you come help us so that we, my wife doesn't do something she's not supposed to do? He may have been mesmerized as well. I don't know. God says he wasn't deceived. We'll see that. God said he wasn't deceived. Okay? So we're going to see that. In a, in a minute, uh, based on the scripture that we're going to read. Okay? Um, okay. So, give me a moment, y'all. All right, so I'm going to try to pay attention to the comments, but uh, I don't see any comments. All right, so, but here I am looking at my phone and see see that uh, Daniel put some comments in there. And I thank you, Daniel. And I'm not sure and, and exactly sure why I'm not seeing these comments come in. Um, but I definitely don't see them. But I'm going to read them. So Daniel said, when they hid from God, since they are knowing they are uh, they, they now know good and evil, they, 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 they made a decision to hide. If they never knew good and evil, they wouldn't they wouldn't even had a thought to hide, that's for sure. Now they also feel shame and guilt and fear, and they and those things cause us to make the choices we shouldn't have to make. We we were never created to deal with the level of understanding the way God knows it. Uh, God already knows where we are. He asked us that you know we should admit it out loud and in in um then you ask the question how many of us are afraid of the repercussions of something that we have done so we try to leave it unsaid and cover it up 
uh, we get found out and that makes it worse okay and how how do you rec rectify the situation between you and your wife well we're gonna well maybe we'll answer that in another one um, but in the meantime I'm gonna keep that in mind about how you rectify the situation between you and your wife uh, the fact of the matter is Adam has some rectifying to do because of what he did and we're gonna talk more about that um, you know let's see why is not the comments showing not sure why the comments are not showing but nevertheless we're going to um, we're going to keep going and moving on uh, and maybe because who knows all right so let's move on all right thank you Daniel I appreciate that all right so then the Lord all right so verse 12 the man said the woman whom you gave to me she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate then the Lord said to the woman what is this you have done the woman said the serpent deceived me and I ate and she was right she said the serpent deceived me and I ate she was she was honest in what she did she said the serpent deceived me she was honest and said exactly what happened the serpent deceived me and I ate and then God didn't say did did moved on to the serpent and said the Lord God said to the serpent because you have done this cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field on your belly you shall go and thus you shall eat all the days of your life and so listen the serpents that you see today was not the serpents that you saw that the serpents that you see today is not the serpent that is spoken of in the first the serpent has it was changed and they're no longer the same as I was doing some study on this you know uh, Dan Quisnick uh, I believe that's his name uh, he was talking about how the serpent changed and if you do some studying on this you'll see the serpent is 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 no longer what it used to be it's cursed and that's what God did he says you're cursed above all livestock and thus you will eat all the days I will put enmity between you and the woman okay and between between your offspring and her offspring he shall bruise your he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel and this this is referring to the future children and offspring of Adam and Eve which is Christ and this is what's going to happen this is kind of sort of the gospel story about what's going to happen how they're going to be redeemed from what they went through okay and so that's just trying to make sure I don't miss any more comments here so guess we'll be doing it like this to make sure we don't miss any comments so listen to make sure we don't miss any comments so listen All right, so we shouldn't have to go through this, but hey, this is what we go through. So um, probably going to edit this part out the video because we don't need all this, but y'all going to see it live. But that's okay. That's cool. All right, so um, again, the fact of the matter is God was saying here that you're going to be redeemed. And he's given the story about how mankind will be redeemed from what just happened. Okay. And so after he talks to the serpent, he comes to the woman and he says, all right, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. Now, this is the verse that makes it. That, that that you need to understand 
so that you know why it's difficult for you to be a husband. Why is being a husband difficult? And this is the, the, the verse that points the very thing out that causes it to be difficult. Not only this verse, but every verse after this. So, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to not read this verse just, just yet again. I'm not going to go through. I'm going to go through all the verses so you can see everything that God said. So uh, then, then, he, then he went to Adam and says, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you in pain. You shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to the dust you shall return. Okay, so... Listen, before I get to verse 16, listen to what is, is saying from verse 14 all the way to verse 19. No, things are no longer going to be, things are no longer going to be as easy as it was. God is now saying, because of what you did, you have now caused things to be worse than what they could have to the serpent, to the woman, and to the man. They now have caused things to be more difficult. The serpent is no longer the beautiful creature it was, is now slithering on the ground, eating the dust, reminding himself of what it allowed itself to do to Eve. Because man came from dust, and now it's eaten up the dust. I mean, I just thought about that. It's now eating the dust, being reminded of the fact that it allowed itself to be used by Satan to deceive mankind. So... I'm not exactly sure all the implications of that, but that's just what, you know, I believe God put in my mind. But, you know, that's just my thoughts, okay? It's not in the Bible. There's nothing in the Bible that co corroborates with what I just said, but that's just something that came in my mind, okay? So then he talks to the woman. The pain he gave, first he had pain for the, the, the serpent, now pain for the woman, and then pain for the man everybody's now going to be in pain things are not going things are not going to be as easy as they once were every the man had, mankind had things easy and no longer are they going to be easy uh in life man's going to have to work work and work to do what he needs to get done and that is included in his marriage as well and that's why we go back to verse 16. We're going to go back to verse 16. And let's read that. And <clears throat> English Standard Version just says, To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Okay? That's why women bring, bring forth children in pain. That's not every woman. But for the most part, the majority of women who have birth, they bring forth women, they bring forth their children in pain. And again, not every woman uh, it does this, but for the most part, it's, across, it's almost across the line. Okay, but here's the one that we need to, to, to see. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. That's that push and pull, the push and pull that I was talking about. Your wife's 
desire is going to be contrary to you because of what had happened in there. You, you, you're, you're, this, is the, this is what God, this is the consequence. Y'all going to be fighting back and forth with each other. And from that day on, all the way up until Christ came, man dominated women. Man dominated women. That's that's what happened. Okay, and and that's and, and and men still have the urge to dominate women today, but because of Christ in Christianity, that has been diluted very much because God now gives the commands to husbands to love your wife as Christ loved the church, and gives the commands to wives submit to your husbands and respect them and that that right there helps to rectify the situation where your desire shall be contrary to your husband you're going to want to you're going to want to do the opposite of what your husband is is asking you to do especially when you don't want to do it Okay, and this is what's going on in marriages today, and those who are not in Christ has it has has it worse, and those who are not obedient to Christ, you know, they have it worse as well. And that's why it's it's pertinent that we have a right relationship with God so that the Holy Spirit can help us when we want to dominate our wives and do things that we are not supposed to do okay and it is paramount that we go to god to get what we need to love our wives as christ loved the church as we saw in philippians chapter 2 verses 3 all the way to verse 10 okay we need God to help us to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Your wife needs God to help her to submit to you, to respect you. Without God, none of this happens, folks. We're just like Adam and Eve was after the fall. Man wanting to dominate his wife, and a wife is fighting against her husband. Not in every situation, but... In those situations where she wants to do what she wants to do and the husband sees things differently. Okay? I'm not sure if that's what happened there where Adam and Eve had this conversation and Eve was trying to convince Adam that, you know, we needed to do this and, and God saying now that, you know, okay, so y'all want to keep, y'all y'all did that and so now that's y'all going to have that struggle for the duration of time until time ends i don't know if if that's what happened but let's look at verse 7 back again and we're going to end with this and then also i'm going to ask, answer the question when when daniel said, how do you rectify the situation between you and your wife uh and we say with with you and your wife i'll, I'll look in more detail in that in, in a minute and 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 here it says in the in verse 7 And I don't think it's verse 7 that I want to look at. Just give me a moment. Verse 6 is what I want to look at again. And, and it says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to her to the eyes, and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate okay adam was there with his wife and here's what god says about what adam did first timothy chapter 2 verse 14 and it was not adam who was deceived but the woman who was deceived and fell into transgression Adam was not deceived, fellas. Adam knew exactly 
what he was doing when he took the fruit from his wife. The question remains is, why did Adam, why did Adam eat the fruit instead of saying we should not eat the fruit? Let's not eat the fruit. Why did Adam eat the fruit? Now, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm only going to surmise what I believe based on what's happening now. And I already said it. They may have had this conversation, and, and I don't know. It's nowhere written in the Bible what this happened. I, I can only go with the context of this text. The context of this text says, says that the woman is now, her desire is now going to be contrary to her husband, and the husband is now going to rule over her. So, <clears throat> based on the context, Adam wasn't deceived, okay, because we, we heard that. Adam wasn't deceived. Satan didn't deceive him. Adam knew exactly what he was doing, but what I believe happened was Adam allowed his wife to talk him into eating the fruit. That may have, I believe, based on the context, I could be wrong. I'm not saying that I'm 100% right. But based on the fact that God, what, what God did, and God do, does things for reason, in order, he doesn't arbitrarily pick things out to do them, God does things in order, and I believe because God says your desire is going to be contrary to your husband, it's because of the fact that Eve convinced her husband to do, to eat the fruit. Okay? And husbands... We fall for it every time. We fall for it every time. And I'm not wife bashing here. I'm not. The fact of the matter is, men, we know we want to please our wives and we, want, we don't want our wives to be upset with us. So therefore, we wind up doing things that we know we're not supposed to do to appease our wives. And we get in trouble every time. And then, <clears throat> after it happens so many times, fellas, we get frustrated. And then we get brave. And then we get angry. And then we start dominating. Then we start saying things we ain't supposed to be saying. We start doing things that we are not supposed to be doing. And so for us to stop this from happening, so to make it easier for us to be a husband, we got to start doing things the way that we're supposed to be doing and, and find a way to not allow our wives' feelings and emotions and our desire to want our wives to be, to continue to like us. Because look, we know that the, the moment that our wife is mad at us, she's not going to give us the sex and I think that's a lot of us issues a lot of us have that issue that we don't want the sex to stop and because we don't want the sex to stop we give in and that's the wrong thing to do we should not do that okay we should not do that and we got one more comment come in Eve uh, now know good and evil. Eve Eve now knows good and evil. That it wasn't good, a good thing. What she did, she knew it was bad. Adam st was still not knowing more than likely. Didn't completely understand the whole the whole ramification of what's about to happen. Adam could have said, God, she ate the fruit or something, but we all know snitches get stitches. 
So he ate to give his wife, so his wife wouldn't get mad at him. And that's what I was just saying. We don't want our wives mad at him, uh, mad at us, okay? <laughs> to snitches get stitches. Oh, wow. I mean, and that's what they say, okay? But the fact of the matter is, Adam could have done the, gotten, and I know this video is way over today, way over today. But hey, you know, it could have been a part three, but we didn't need a part three. We need to, to finish it today. Listen, fellas, do what's right, okay? That's what we need to do as husbands. We need to do, is do what's right. And if we don't get the sex, you know, it's not like your wife is going to turn off the sex forever. If she does, you need to talk to God. The fact of the matter is, you know, sex is not everything. And I'm a man. I know that we desire that. That's what we think about more throughout the day than anything else. But as you get older, you may not think of it as much, but you do. But the fact of the matter is, fellas, don't allow the sex to cause you to eat the fruit that you know you're not supposed to eat. Don't allow the sex to cause you to eat the fruit that you shouldn't eat. To make being a husband easier, follow God's instructions, okay? It's not going to be like it was in the beginning with Adam and Eve, but it it will be better and you will have more peace of mind knowing that you did what was right instead of cowering down, bowing down, giving in, you know, to the pressure, you have to do what is right, no matter what. Let's pray out. Father, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness, for allowing us this time with you in today's live Q&A. Uh, we just want to thank you, Lord, for what you have revealed to us and help everybody who sees this video to get what they need to get out of it so that they can now operate as a husband the way that you want them to operate as a husband. I thank you, Lord, for the wisdom and opening my eyes to see what I need to, to see. Uh, doesn't make it easier, but it does allow me to make the right choices so that things in life can be easy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Daniel, for your comments. I appreciate it. Look for you all um, to eventually get in and, and comment. I want to know what y'all think about this, this video. I want to know what your thoughts are. Um, give, me, give me your thoughts in the comments. Um, but until then, y'all take care. Have a good day. And do what God tells you.